September 10th, 2014 Milton School Committee meeting will come to order. As is our tradition, please join me in pledging allegiance to our flag and our country. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So on the tonight's agenda, uh, we have two changes, the special ed presentation on closing the achievement gap uh, will not be tonight. We will be um, looking forward to that at one of our October meetings. And the bus fee analysis and recommendation will not be tonight. Similarly, we'll be looking at one of our October meetings for that presentation and recommendation. And with that, uh, I'll accept the September 10th agenda. Um, I'd like to start by welcoming our student representatives, our returning members, Matt McCarthy and Audrey Erickson, and new sophomore member, Spencer Torres. Welcome, Spencer. Thank you. And just wanted you to know that um, you've got a pretty high bar uh, Matt and Audrey have by far been the most active and most involved school committee reps we've ever had. So uh, feel free to jump right into these discussions. Let us know what you're thinking and why you're thinking it. Um, I don't see anyone for Citizen Speak because there's no one in the audience. So <laughs> I conclude there's no one for Citizen Speak. So let's move to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Chairman Walker. Uh, welcome back. Uh, from your summers and to uh, all those smiling Milton High School students down there uh, to the 2015 school year. Uh, we had a very uh, busy summer in the Milton Public Schools. Uh, I've written in my blasts and communicated with the school committee. There were all, over 900 Milton Public School students involved in our uh, summer programs using the high school and the Cunningham School. I want to recognize our custodians and maintenance staff in consolidated facilities townwide. They worked tirelessly the day the students left until the day before they returned, cleaning every space of every school. Uh, there, was, uh, there were painting projects, maintenance. Uh, we have a few Milton High School students who join that crew and help to empty out and clean every single locker. Um, down to that level of cleaning. And so uh, to Bill Ritchie, Bob Mayhew, and each and every uh, custodian and maintenance employee, I want to personally thank them uh, for the conditions that we came back to in the schools. Uh, we had a very positive, smooth beginning to school. Uh, I want to begin by saying we d have had bus issues. We've had some transportation issues. One, we've had uh, Pam Dorsey has who heads our community schools has always been in charge of transportation for the uh, recent years and she did not want to do that um, take on that responsibility in addition to community schools we posted that position and Jake Smith who is a classroom teacher at the Cunningham uh, worked all summer with the bus company and he has uh, put in the hours above and beyond um, in the transition there was an issue about an extra half bus um, in the afternoon that's been solved and replaced so that I want to um, assure uh, the parents and guardians of the students in the Milton Public Schools that we're working uh, to solve every one of the bus issues. Um, we're making adjustments and I realize uh, parents have said well now we've been in school two weeks that um, the morning students are here on time but uh, there is no excuse for uh, the lengthy bus rides that some elementary school students have had in the afternoon. But um, by the end of the week, we're going to have all of those solved. So I want to publicly recognize the patience of uh, those parents and students and the guardians of those students and also recognize uh, the teachers and principals. I've conveyed to Mr. Walker how those principals have been very patient and uh, 
uh, worked with us on those bus changes. So I want to recognize publicly that we have had bus issues, but um, I believe by Friday those will all be solved. And I would also say that anyone who has a bus issue uh, has communicated with Jake Smith or the bus number, but anyone who has a bus issue, I want them to email me, some parents do, but to email me directly and we will solve every bus issue. And I would just offer that that role uh, is a high stress role that is constant problem solving and uh, Ms. Dorsey did do it and do it well for several years so it's understandable that uh, she might want to perform her real job. <laughs> So I should have started that by recognizing it. And Jake Smith is uh, putting everything into it, um, but uh, we're all working on it now, and um, that's no excuse. It will all be solved by the end of the week. Can I just ask one question? Do, do, do we think that the, um, these issues resulted from performance on behalf of the vendor, the bus company, or, uh, or some other cause? Well, there was one issue in the transition that we um, – we weren't aware about uh, an additional run um, that was added to the Collie Cock Cunningham as a result of issues in past years. Um, but no, I think it's just um, uh, adjusting routes, uh, changing stops, and um, really making those routes more effective and, uh, you know, making sure that every um, stop is, um, uh, matches the needs of the family and uh, the bus company. But that's a, that's a great question. I, I rode one of the buses today, and so um, we made some changes, and we'll continue uh, to make those changes. But uh, we, um, it brought you back riding the bus with the uh, <laughs> kids in the, the children in the afternoon. But the families were wonderful, and the children were wonderful. Uh, so we had a very smooth beginning. I'd like all of you to join me. This is uh, Janet Sheehan's first uh, school committee meeting as assistant superintendent. Thank you. Uh, that's been a seamless transition. She hit the ground uh, running, and uh, it's been uh, really wonderful. And I just Thank said to her, I was very, very glad that she was with us here tonight. Um, again, uh, we work with Mr. Walker in brainstorming uh, the personnel issues. Holly Concannon, who was a uh, language arts coordinator in the district, is now the principal of the Collicott School. Um, we have had transitions within our curriculum coordinators. We have had movement within our administrative assistant uh, positions, and we've detailed those in the email blast, and we'll detail all of them in one of my upcoming um, email blasts. But uh, right from a new residency uh, coordinator to a high school administrative assistant, um, but today's a very poignant day. Uh, since 1997, Janet Potts says, been a um, teacher aide at the Cunningham and then worked in our special ed offices and uh, today's her last day. Uh, she was recognized by over a hundred of her peers last night um, at a retirement party and so uh, there's been a lot of movement but we'll detail that movement for the public. Uh, we've uh, we, uh, hired this year 29 teachers and it's always important to explain to the public and to parents that that's not 29 new teachers. Um, those 29 teachers uh, would have uh, been filling the positions of teachers who retired. You wanted many of those teachers at your um, table last year. Teachers who have resigned, their uh, families may have moved out of state. Uh, we have teachers who asked for leaves. We have te uh, many times the leaves will be for um, maternity leaves. Uh, perhaps for one or two years. And so those 29 positions, really the three new positions that you approved in the budget, really four new positions you approved in the budget, uh, one was the uh, technology administrator. I want to recognize Assistant Superintendent Sheehan uh, and working with the leadership team. We did extensive interviewing and I'm very proud to announce to you that we've appointed Dr. Angela Burke I'm going to ask Dr. Burke to join us at the table so that you can uh, meet her. Uh, she has a uh, very, very strong background. Uh, I said to Chairman Walker uh, when we had our first meeting with her, with Dr. Burke, and we set up interviews with all of our administrators, uh, she said, when I finish those interviews, I'd like to get right into the classrooms. 
And so that's always a wonderful indication. Uh, she's just been here this week, reported back at the end of every day. Uh, we think that's going to be uh, really an outstanding addition in the Milton Public Schools to really uh, monitor and be responsible for uh, between our school budget, our technology purchases, the capital purchases, and the MFE purchases, and all of the professional development for our staff, and really being responsible for that K-12 uh, technology digital curriculum and the curriculum integration into every subject. So uh, that is, uh, you approve that in our advancement budget. Uh, Assistant Superintendent Sheehan and I and the leadership team uh, interviewed extensively for the parent liaison. We collaborated uh, with member Bagley Jones who reviewed um, a resume of a candidate that we're in final discussions with. So I hope at our next meeting I'll be able to announce that appointment. We haven't yet made that appointment. And we're still in the midst of interviewing for the data specialist. And so uh, I hope at the next meeting we'll be able to also announce that appointment. You also approved over the summer um, uh, an additional health position at the Pierce School. I think that I've received more positive emails about the additional health teacher at Pierce School uh, than, a posi than any position in recent history. And so parents um, are very aware uh, that there will be physical education and health at the Pierce Middle School, and I can't tell you how uh, positive they have responded to that. And uh, Principal uh, Spalding is really responsible for uh, really leading that, and the wellness team of uh, members Bagley Jones and Padera have uh, really raised the consciousness of all of us. And so 29... I would just offer that uh, in the technology position that Dr. Burke is filling that um, member Sheridan played a significant role in helping us to define the responsibilities and requirements of that position. Absolutely. Uh, give credit where credit is due on all uh, member Bagley Jones uh, with the job description of the parent liaison and member Sheridan with both the data analyst and uh, the technology administrator refining that. And those job descriptions matter. And we're reverted back to those job descriptions and uh, they're really, really valuable. For new positions, it's important to start out with the correct set of expectations. And it just wasn't easy. Um, it was uh, a lot of work and I appreciate it so that um, our 29 teachers have joined the Milton Public Schools and I've asked Assistant Superintendent Sheehan uh, just for a few moments to give you uh, just an overview for parents watching and for the school committee uh, the lengths that we go to uh, with the mentoring and the professional development bringing in uh, these new teachers and integrating them into the school district. So we, we really have a very comprehensive plan for new teachers entering the system. Um, there were three days um, set aside for teachers to participate in uh, multiple activities. The first day was planned by some of our teacher leaders and it's our um, teacher mentoring um, team. And uh, so we, we want to thank um, the, um, the mentoring leadership team, um, John Radosta from the high school, Owen McElhinney from the middle school and April Allegretza from the um, elementary schools. And uh, they have um, really planned an extensive program that has been implemented over the past years. They have a uh, mentoring handbook for new teachers. They have um, month at a, a month at a glance and it's a, um, it's a handbook for both the mentors and the protégés. It's a checklist month by month. It includes just some um, sort of the day-to-day -day tasks. It also includes information about parent communication, the evaluation tool, classroom management. So they cover a, a great number of topics. Um, they get to meet their mentors. They, um, they have a nice lunch. And um, it really is a, um, a wonderful program. And we really received tremendous feedback in the next two days where there, were, there, where there was the um, teacher orientation itself that was planned by the district. And, um, the, um, for the first day of the um, new teacher orientation, we had um, Superintendent Gormley speak. She welcomed and, um, and uh, discussed expectations for, um, for um, new members of our uh, teams. Um, we also um, had um, members from, uh, from the town. We had Diane Gore and her assistant who talked about um, health insurance. 
Um, we also had Barbara Paclonitis from Payroll who um, discussed necessary information for new teachers. And uh, Margaret Gibbons talked about union membership. Um, um, on that first day, a lunch was provided again, and uh, then the new teachers had an opportunity to meet with their principals back at their schools and uh, see their classrooms and, uh, and, and utilize that time um, at the schools. And the second day, we had another um, teacher leadership team um, that worked on um, technology. And they planned um, a number of activities, um, first led by Bob Patterson. So we wish to thank Bob, uh, Jessica Royster, and Sarah Doherty. Um, they planned um, um, a number of activities around technology resources in the district. So um, Bob talked about those resources. Um, he talked about the school network, the uh, Milton Public Schools website and email and so forth. Um, then we had um, information about um, Edline, um, the professional development website, and uh, a couple of the presenters covered Smart Notebook and uh, Smart Exchange. They had in the afternoon what they called a technology petting zoo, and the, uh, the new teachers got to use all of the tools that are in the classrooms in the various schools. So they, um, they particularly enjoyed that. They worked with Chromebooks and iPads. Um, they had a chance to um, go over Study Island, um, some of the other programs unique to their schools. Um, the, um, the groups um, divided, and uh, they, they went over um, grade quick um, noodle tools for the uh, Pierce and Middle High School teachers. And uh, in addition to Study Island, the elementary teachers um, took a look at everyday math and keyboarding without tears, which will be newly implemented this year. The afternoon um, was focused on the new evaluation tool, and we had Kerry Devon, um, whom we want to thank, um, who facilitated that activity, and uh, she brought the teachers up to date um, on the new evaluation tool. As you know, our, our, um, our teachers um, have already had a number of workshops, and uh, so they got caught up, and uh, it was, as I said, a very comprehensive program. Uh, also, thank you, Assistant Superintendent Sheehan. Uh, Mr. Walker came to the luncheon and on behalf of the school committee welcomed the new teachers. And uh, I, I think it's important to uh, recognize our returning staff at the elementary level. There wasn't a teacher at the elementary level. It's sort of the nature of the position that wasn't in school uh, during the summer and every classroom was ready to receive children. So those professional development days uh, we really schedule from the evaluation tool to new curriculum programs for uh, reviewing um, IEPs. Uh, we really schedule those days for new teachers and all returning teachers. Um, I would like to also uh, recognize and report out that over the summer, working with the Finance Subcommittee and uh, again, the entire committee meeting after um, your retreat, that we monitored the enrollment all during the summer. And we added a new kindergarten at the uh, Cunningham School and a new English first grade at the Glover School. So the enrollment um, increased, um, and I've put that data in your packet, and um, I'll detail it in the blast that we had, um, again, we went over our caps, and we're very close to the caps now. Um, when I was detailing for um, this presentation and to put it out to parents, you should also know the second grades are getting very near um, their caps. And uh, as new children move into the district, um, that really happens uh, right through uh, 12th grade. So um, I really appreciate uh, your support and uh, advocating for kindergarten and first grade. It will make a difference um, for their entire school career. So those um, assignments were made, uh, those teachers were interviewed, uh, hired, and those classrooms were in place and that furniture arrived before the students arrived. Uh, so it was very, very exciting uh, to have those classrooms. They're completely uh, assimilated into the district. So those were uh, two, I think, uh, very, again, you didn't anticipate having to add two new teachers when you went through your budget process and we never anticipated. Um, I. Uh, said to uh, the public that I had never seen that kind of uh, 
influx in that number of new students at kindergarten and first grade before in the Milton Public Schools. Uh, very briefly, we're going to invite uh, Jackie Morgan, our food service director, uh, to one of our meetings. There are new regulations around from the federal government around what food uh, can be uh, served to students uh, during the school day and now 30 minutes after the school day. But Jackie Morgan uh, wrote a grant uh, for $4,000 from the New England Dairy Council. She was awarded the grant the other day uh, for a cart. Um, you have to see it to believe it. I should have one of you tell the story about the breakfast program at Milton High School. Do any of you? I, I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, so the breakfast cart is virtually what it is is you walk in through the field house and you just see it's just a big green cart um, I go to it just about every morning after I worked out this morning I went right to it I usually get um, you can get like kind of quick stuff you can get a muffin get a, uh, a couple granola bars a thing of milk and some orange juice uh, it's it's perfect for me though because I'm kind of like well, if you're still if you're uh, on the go you don't really have time to sit down and eat you can grab that. It's quick, easy, and it kind of keeps you full throughout the day. Well, I have to tell you that uh, you're a better ad. You should stay with us. Um, Jackie Morgan gives credit to Linda Lee Sheridan for sharing, um, who's familiar with breakfast programs, how children of all ages really want something hot in the morning. And so you have to witness this cot and the number of high school students using their passes, um, getting breakfast in the morning. So. Um, we've set up percentages to gauge ourselves to increase the breakfast program at every school. So we have a ways to go at the elementary and at the PS school, but the high school has really set the standard and we think if you can do it at the high school, you can do it at the elementary and middle and the correlation um, to breakfast, uh, to the research around obesity and diabetes, uh, diabetes uh, in later life and just every single day learning once you've had breakfast so we've set some goals for ourselves but Jackie Morgan's going to come and share more of that with all of you um, our open houses have been set up tomorrow night at Milton High School Pierce the 18th Glover Tucker and Cunningham the 23rd and Collie Cot October 2nd those are on the front of the website I would invite and encourage every parent in the viewing audience to attend these open houses. You visit your children's classrooms, um, hear the expectations from the teachers, and um, if you can see demonstrated uh, from behind, we've already they've already put up a display of the work of the students in the advanced placement art. Um, so this building really is alive with uh, displays of student work and preparation for tomorrow night. But I would encourage you to take a moment. It's really breathtaking. Um, Friday night, um, Ms. Padera might want to do this part of the superintendent's uh, report. Ms. Padera? Well, I believe it's Friday Night Lights, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And so um, first you can game. get out of feeding your children dinner and just bring them to Friday night football game under the lights and pizza, hot dogs, everything. There's face painting, I think. Um, other kids activities. The cookout starts at five and the game starts at seven. So I think kids under the age of, it's either 10 or 12 are free. Um, and you know, oh. what a perfect night. It's supposed to, the weather's supposed to be nice. So I expect to see everybody there. My kids will be there. So the boosters uh, for the kickoff home game uh, sponsor this event. Um, do our students have anything to say about this o home opener? Okay, what, are, what are our chances? Um, it's going to be a tough game on Friday. I expect to come out with the win. We've been working hard all week on the uh, for the football team. Really polished everything up today. It's a mental day tomorrow. We really could use the uh, town sport throughout the whole game. Thank you. Who are you playing? Oh, we're uh, playing Mansfield this week. Well said. Well said. Uh, there'll no, be no school on September 25th um, in honor of Rosh Hashanah. Celebrate Milton for everyone to circle on their calendars. October 5th this year it will be at the PS Middle School. National Walk to School Day you'll hear about later. Um, October 8th uh, is, is a growing event in our elementary schools. Uh, Ms. Padera and I attended the MFE board meeting in this very room the other night and they're gearing up for the Monster Dash on October 26th. Would you want to report, report out on that? Um, 
Monster Dash. I'm trying to think of what's, I think it's a lot of the same activities. Or I think they're going to put together the kids run and kids activities. So they'll pay, um, in the past you paid for the kids to run and there were all these other activities. But I think you're just paying one kid's fee. And then the kids will have all these activities. The, um, the 5K, there's going to be a lot of our student athletes from the high school running in their uniforms, from what I understand this year. There will be a lot of people um, dressed up in costume. I think Mario said he's going to be back. Um, so it should be a fun day. And uh, also to every Milton Public School parent, uh, the MFE's annual letter has um, gone out. All of their school activities, um, I would encourage parents to uh, go to the website and uh, their individual teachers at line and school's website. Thank you, Chairman Walker. Thank you. So under the chairman's report, executive session vote report out and at our July 16th executive session and or August 20th uh, executive session, we approve the following actions. A 2% cost of living adjustment for all HRS employees for fiscal year 15 effective July 1, 2014. We approved an annualized salary of 125000 for Janet Sheehan, uh, Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Human Resources for the duration of the assignment. We approved an annualized salary of 110000 for Holly Concanon, uh, Principal at the Collicott Elementary School for the duration of the assignment, and $110,000 salaries for Jonathan Redden, Principal of the Cunningham School, effective July 1, 2014 and for Dr. Elaine mcneil Germay, Principal of the Tucker School, effective July 1st, 2014. <clears throat> and we approved a salary of $123,600 for Dr. Glenn Pavlicek, Assistant Superintendent for Business, effective July 1, 2014. And a retention bonus of $5,000 payable on or about January 1st, 2016 for Dr. Pavlicek. And I have no follow-up items for this meeting, so let's go to Finance Subcommittee. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> late, um, well, we have the approval of vendor warrants. Um, and oh, I have that. Superintendent Gormley, if you have the total. The motion um, is to approve $226,310.88. So moved. Second. And that's warrant 11 dated 9 11 2014. Thank you. $226,310.88. So on the motion to approve fiscal year uh, 15, warrant number 11 at, in the amount of $226,000. $310.88. All in favor? Opposed? Abstain. The motion carries. Uh, old business citizen speak response. Uh, we have no nothing under that agenda item. Uh, next meeting agenda items. On the September 17th agenda, the, the agenda at this point is looking relatively light. Uh, I'm going to sit down with the superintendent tomorrow and make sure that there aren't um, any agenda items that we haven't anticipated that we would be adding. But that not being the case, um, I will poll the members as to whether we um, should keep that meeting on the schedule or move the small number of agenda items that we have there to our first October meeting. But I'll pull you by email on that after the superintendent and I talk tomorrow. I think it's a great idea. Um, it looks like we might have someone for citizen speak. Maura, do we have someone? No. Oh, well, welcome. Hello. Uh, Mr. Walker, yeah. could I say something, please? Absolutely. Thank you. So tonight marks the um, beginning of my ninth year on the school committee and the third year of my third term on the school committee. And um, 
I am here tonight to say to you that I will not be seeking a re-election in the spring. Uh, my job as a K-8 principal in the Boston Public Schools is just requires too much of my time to continue on the school committee, but I, I felt it was important to say this early so that people, wonderful townsfolk, would consider running for this position because um, it's an extremely rewarding position. Uh, you get to meet with meet and work with really terrific people. I think you learn every single day that you serve on this committee. There's something to learn. And uh, most importantly, or in addition, I maybe not most importantly, but you also get to give back. For me, it was important to give back to this community that's given so much to me and my family. So um, it's a great job. If It's a job. It's not a paid job, but it's a great job. And if anyone is interested, p please feel free to contact me at lsheridan at miltonps.org. I'd be happy to talk to you about running for school committee or answer any questions that you might have. So thank you. Well, it's very early to start the goodbye speeches. Don't. Please so. don't. <laughs> Please don't. So, so I won't. But, but I will say that um, you were certainly instrumental in um, helping me to reach the decision to become involved in the school committee. And um, you were a great role model for uh, what the chair should be like. So thanks. I'll have a longer speech later. <laughs> you have a long time to prepare. Right. <laughs> Um, with that, I'll entertain, oh. oh. One thing, uh, I should have mentioned it when Mary um, uh, was mentioning the happenings. I believe the invitations went out today for the Milton Library Foundation's gala, which is October 23rd. Uh, so um, if you haven't um, received an invitation, uh, Go to the website, and I won't be able to give it, give it to you, but if you put in Minton Library Foundation, you'll be able to get it. Um, one of the presentations we're going to have at the gala is um, Laurie Henry, who's our elementary, one of our elementary librarians, and Sarah Trogue, who's the, children's, the head of the children's section at the library, and they will be make, making a presentation about the coordinated efforts between the Milton Public Schools and the Milton Public Library to increase early literacy. So it should be a great time. Uh, we have a couple of great authors uh, who are going to be speaking. We have a great auction, so uh, mark your calendar October 23rd. <coughs> And with that, <laughs> I'll entertain a motion to um, go into executive session for the purpose of discussing uh, the deployment of security personnel um, not to return to public session, uh, the discussion of which would be detrimental to our uh, security plans and procedures in public session. So move. Or second. Was that? On, on the motion, Ms. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Bagley Jones? Yes. Shocking. Ms. Zulis? Yes. Ms. Padera? Yes. Ms. Sheridan? Yes. Mr. Walker, yes. We are moving to executive session, not to return to public session. <laughs>